a kid and a flute and they're smoking weed. And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. It's time, Bunny! It's time. It's time. Yes, Bunny, my friend who is more than brother to me. I embrace thee. See, if you are a member of our Facebook group, you get that reference. So go join our Facebook group because we post the spiciest memes. Yes, we do. Hot uh, off the yes. presses. Yes, Bunny, my friend, it is time once again for all of us here at the Pope on Film Podcast to whip and or nay nay our way into the third and final part of our big shoe. And it is said third act, wherein we finally and eventually get around to discussing our exclusive deluxe hand-carved, hand-painted, and available only for a limited time. So call now. Movie of the week! And this week, we watch one of those movies where the title just Says it all. The 1980, the uh, obscure, would you call this obscure? I would call this obscure. I would call this obscure. The obscure, low-budget 80s horror film, Flesh Eating Mothers, based on the William Shakespeare play of the same name. And I'd like to start off the discussion of Flesh Eating Mothers <laughs> by saying this. There's a lot of horror movies that came out in the 80s. Yes. The 80s were a prime time for horror movies. But I have I have I have never seen one like Flesh Eating Mothers that so clearly so loudly screams a Tubi TV exclusive. <laughs> yes. Because uh, Flesh Eating Mothers is available to download right now on archive.org or you can watch it for free on YouTube. Or, yeah, you could go to Tubi. This movie's on Tubi. Because, of course, it is. This is a Tubi film. Yes. Ah, uh, my favorite line is that one that the one guy says um, in the preview that you just ran uh, yeah. during the break. Uh, and my, my parents told me to never hit a woman. But they said they didn't say anything about a cannibal. And then he punches the mom in the face. Yeah. Love that scene. Love that so much. There is a sound in this that sounds like a pig squealing. And they play it over and over again during all of the death parts. And it drove me insane. <laughs> it drove me straight up insane especially at the end when the when the like crooked cop finally gets his comeuppance and they're just playing it constantly and i wanted to throw myself out of a window but um this is just one of those movies where it's like this movie is stupid this movie is dumb this movie is so badly made but next weekend, if I'm high and I'm just hanging out and I have nothing to do, I might put on Flesh Eating Mothers. Yeah. You know, it's one of those movies that's just so stupid that you can just, just you want something on in the background, put on Flesh Eating Mothers. I, I you know? don't know. I, I found it, I found it overall horrible, horrible. with some bright horrible spots. Movie. Yeah. It's a horrible film. Okay, so the like uh See right okay, I, right off the bat. Right off the bat. The trailer yeah. looked interesting. Okay? The yeah. trailer looked interesting. And then starting the movie like the opening credits I was really impressed with. I was like, "Damn. This is a really inventive Low budget way of doing an empty uh, opening s credit sequence with like the, a, the 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 kids drawings and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice opening, and then we get to the first shot, and I'm like, "Ah, oh, fuck." <laughs> the the tagline the first for the shot: A guy is running through the woods in the winter. And he's running. He's running. Yeah. He's running normally. 
And then he's suddenly, not making any noise. He's just running. And then suddenly, his arm is just off. His arm's just gone, and then he starts screaming. Yeah, and it's like, exactly like, like we don't when see the, the when, arm when Wiley Coyote is walking in in the air, and then he looks down. Yes, and that's when he falls. That like his arm is missing, and he's like, "I gotta get out of here! I gotta get out of here!" Wait, I'm missing an arm. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> I love and, that. And there's no, yeah, yeah. Um, we don't know when he lost his arm. Nope. You know, we did not see the arm come off. We did not see the arm. All we saw is this guy is missing an arm. Well, I assume. And then he shoots that his he, wife. I assume that that guy lost an arm because he was bedding in a hotel with Quentin Tarantino that his lucky Zippo would light 10 times. Yes. Yes. That's usually how people lose body parts. Yes. But why was there so much snow in Vegas? <laughs> That's an it, well, you know, it's been snowing at my parents' house in in uh, Arizona in the outskirts of Phoenix. They yeah. got snow. A decent amount of snow. It's crazy. California's getting a ton of snow right now. It's weird. <laughs> That's the thing about flesh eating mothers, man. We're not in the middle of one apocalypse, one possible apocalyptic doomsday scenario. We're in the middle of like ten. Yes. Possible apocalyptic doomsday scenarios, and so I'm sorry. I don't want to go see a three and a half hour drama about the plight of these of of like how effed up this one situation is. No, just give me flesh eating mothers, man. Back Every in the, character I, was horrible. The, down this to this one their guy core. had a yellow hoodie and he looked exactly like porn actor John Leslie. Yes. And yes. it was weird because I think he was supposed to be a high schooler, but he was clearly like a 32 year old. Like, what high school are you going to? Rydell High from Greece. Yes. Where everyone's a 32 year old high school senior. But I kept seeing a John Leslie, and he was definitely a few decades older than some of the other people who might have actually been teenagers or at least in their 20s. Yeah. But yeah, that this is a horrible acting. Horrible actors. Yes. The I makeup effects. This- the makeup effects overall and some of the effects in the movie I really kind of liked. And when we when the when the flesh eating mothers actually like started coming into their own they were kind of humorous. When the flesh eating mothers start <sighs> their faces started changing what it reminded me of was Blackula. Yeah. Yeah, where it's like, how can we make this person into a vampire? And also, we have no budget. Paint their face gray. You have a gray face now. Go and run, and we'll shoot you in slow motion. There you go. Blackula. Oh, so, no. What about the the Joker prosthetics they had? Yeah, I loved that. I loved that. Okay, okay, so um, before we dive deep into the intense psychological and emotional complexities of the Academy Award-winning drama that is the 1988 film Flesh-Eating Mothers, based on, of course, uh, the memoirs of the Dalai Lama, um, as I said earlier in the show, I've been watching a lot of movies in theaters. I it, At the end of 2018, my wife got me the AMC A-list membership and so for 25 dollars a month for 20 dollars for 25 dollars a month i get three free movie tickets a week and so throughout the for the end of 2018 and all of 2019 and 2020 until the pandemic happened i religiously went to go see three movies every single solitary week and i saw everything and then the pandemic happened and movie theaters closed and now it's 2022, 2023, and I'm starting to go back into theaters. 
but I'm not going to see everything. Yeah. I don't want to see Avatar. So I haven't. And I'm not. I was yeah. really excited to see Shazam 2, and then the star Zachary Levi became like an anti-vaxxer. I'm not going to go see Shazam 2. I want to see movies that are entertaining to me. Flesh-eating mothers is dumb, but it's entertaining, and I'd rather see that than watch some Oscar bait right now. Yeah. I'm sure that All Quiet on the Western Front is brilliant again, but if my choice is between um, All Quiet All Quiet on the Western Front and um, Knock at the Cabin, I might see Knock at the Cabin again. Seriously, Batista's a good actor. Yeah. Yeah, he is. He's a good actor. I loved him in Knock at the Cabin. So, OK, um, I recently saw a movie in theaters. It just came out and I figured I would save my review of this brand new movie until the end of the show, because let's just say there's more than a bit of overlap. The movie I'm talking about is Cocaine Bear. OK. So let me tell you the plot of Cocaine Bear. It's all in the freaking title. Mm-hmm. A bear does cocaine. Period. That's it. You don't. It, it, I saw some. I saw some popular TikTok about it. You don't have to read a bunch of comic books. You don't have to read the book before. You don't have to familiarize yourself with all of these things. No, the, the entirety of the plot is in the title. It, a bear did cocaine. Period. Go have fun. Sit down. Have some popcorn. It's stupid. It's dumb. You'll have fun. <laughs> uh, it 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 feels in a way like a classier, more Hollywood Sharknado. Yeah. Where it's like you see the first Sharknado film and it's like, oh, a tornado filled with sharks. This is going to be stupid. I'll sit and watch this. It's kind of the same thing except m- m- more well done. A bear did cocaine. It's based on a true story. Yeah. In the 80s, it reminds me of Tom Cruise's film American Made, which I've seen two times. And I hate Tom Cruise, but it's a really good movie about this uh, uh, small-time pilot who becomes a drug runner uh, for whatever the big crime family was in Mexico at the time in, like, the 80s. Uh, And then he ends up smuggling weapons to, like, the – to Nicaragua. so, Tom so in, in that Tom, in that Tom Cruise movie, that sounds like he's blow. Small, yeah, kind of. It, it, he's a pilot. He flies to Mexico. He picks up the drugs, and then he flies to America and takes the drugs there. But he's like in a small Cessna. So as long as he's very close to the ground, he won't get picked up by the FAA. So he drives to some forest or some woods or some swampy marshland. And he throws the drugs out of the plane, and then the drug dealers will just find where the drugs landed and pick up the drugs and then distribute them. And that's how they did drugs in, like, the 70s and 80s, how they got drugs into America. So, Maxwell, what is this? Minecraft land. Ooh. uh, Ooh. There you go. That's awesome. Oh, I bet that's going to look sweet at night. Yeah, I... When you're going to bed, that's going to look awesome light turned it on it looks amazing cool high five thank you so um basically uh in cocaine bear that's happening and it actually happened in in the in the 80s these drug dealers flew into uh the woods and they dumped some cocaine but before the drug dealers could get to the cocaine it was eaten by a bear But in the true story, the bear lived for about, I don't know, 5, 10, 15 minutes before he had a heart attack. He didn't kill anyone. He didn't go on a killing spree. But while talking about it on Reddit, some Redditor said, even though bears are tame, for about 10 minutes before that bear had a heart attack, I bet that bear was the most dangerous animal on the planet Earth. And so that's basically the basis of Cocaine Bear. Bear does cocaine. He goes on a murder spree. Um, The cast is phenomenal. Carrie Russell is in it. And this is the first time that I ever found myself going, look at you, Felicity. 
Good for you. Good, good for you. Still making movies. Good for Felicity. Ice Cube's son, O'Shea Jackson Jr., is great in this. Uh, what's his name? Han Solo's in it. From Solo, A Star Wars Story. Oh. That's okay. that Han Solo. The one from um, Hail Caesar. Would that it twere so simple. <clears throat> that guy. He He's in it. He's great in it. Margot Martindale is in Cocaine Bear, and I love actress Margot Martindale. Is she daughter to Wink? I think she might be. She plays herself in BoJack Horseman. She was Dewey Cox's mom. Okay. Uh, I fell in love with her in the show The Riches. Eddie Izzard and Minnie Driver are con artists who accidentally get into an accident with a rich family who dies. So they hide the body and decide to um, pretend to be this rich family. The American dream. We're going to steal it. So Margot Martindale was like the wacky neighbor. She was great in that. And she's great in this. Uh, one of the guys from Modern Family is in Cocaine Bear. And it was really nice to see him get killed. Because okay. I never liked Modern Family. And freaking Ray Liotta! Rest in peace! Yeah. This was his last film! Ray Liotta! Academy Award nominee! Academy Award winner! A legendary actor! And what was his last film? Freaking Cocaine Bear! And this is how the Mandela fe effect happens. Okay, because I, I knew Ray years Liotta from died, now, but once I saw him on screen, I was like, wait, he's dead, right? Yeah. Right? I was so confused. Like, that's Ray Liotta. I swear he's been dead for a couple of years. Why is he on this screen? That is exactly how the Mandela effect happens. Yes. Because I had a hard time remembering when he died, because he's just there. He, he, he's starring in this movie. He does a great job. So, so years from now, night. they're going to swear that, you know, Sinbad played a genie. <clears throat> yeah. So I saw Cocaine Bear on opening night uh, this weekend. I don't like going to movies on opening night, but Cocaine Bear felt like one of those films where you need an audience. And I really liked that the, the, the theater was like 80% full. And I'm glad I went. Uh, it gave me Snakes on a Plane vibes. Yeah. My wife and I went to go see Snakes on a Plane on opening day, and there were all these young people, and they were super excited, and everyone in the theater was talking to each other. One, like, high school kid was giving out toy snakes to everyone in the audience. He didn't work for the theater. He was just excited about this weird uh, film that became a bizarre meme. And he was just giving out snakes to people. And then when you when a snake first killed someone, someone got a bunch of toy snakes and threw them through the theater. <laughs> there, were, there were fake snakes flying through the theater. And it was just fun and dumb and stupid. And that's the vibe that I got. And then right before the movie started, an entire sports team came and sat next to me. They were uh, college kids. I don't know what sport they played, but they were from the nearby Baptist University. They were all like teenagers and 20 some early, like they were all 18, 19, 20 year olds. They were buff. They had no necks. They were douchebags. They were yelling and screaming the entire time. But it, it, at first I'm like, oh man, I hope I pass. I hope I pass. I hope I pass. I hope I pass for a woman. They didn't bother me at all. It and it was great having them, because let me tell you something. Cocaine Bear is gory as hell. Yeah? People are not prepared for this. The jocks kept freaking out. I knew they were from the Baptist University, because, number one, they were all wearing the, oh, the, the Baptist University uh, shirts and jerseys and stuff. And number two, they were shocked when the body parts started flying. And the bear is eating someone's guts while the person is still alive and people being flayed and shot through the head. And these 
Baptist college boys there. They were screaming and I was laughing. <laughs> but the film is dumb and it's stupid. It was way gorier than I thought. It was a dumb, fun, stupid, funny, idiotic movie where here on Earth in the year of our Lord, 2023, we're not smack dab in the middle of an imminent, imminent apocalyptic event. We're smack dab in the crosshairs of multiple imminent apocalyptic events, whether we're going to be hit by the giant meteor, whether it's uh, Putin, it's uh, all the right wingers are certain we're going to be fighting with China in five seconds. Kim Jong-un is still a freak. There's all these other uh, viruses out there. Uh, climate is insane right now. Yes. So I don't want to spend my fleeting time on this earth watching some three and a half hour historical drama. I just want something light and fun to ease the pain of my fleeting life. And this has been my dual review of Cocaine Bear and the 1988 horror film Flesh Eating Mothers. <laughs> Funny, can you grace us with the plot of this film? Yeah, there are mothers. They eat flesh. <laughs> it's never explained why. It's like a sexual disease. They this suddenly shows... just start getting hungry and start eating everything in the house and then start eating people. The film does a good job in a comedic way of showing just how scared people were of AIDS in the 80s. Yes, because this was some kind of a virus. Yeah, we're never it was a virus rid of it. that turned people... I rem... Watching this movie, it really gave me flashbacks to the late 80s, early 90s, where I'm hearing things. Don't French kiss people. You could get AIDS. When you sit down yeah. in a public toilet, be sure and put the little cover on it, because by sitting down on this toilet seat... You could get AIDS. And it's like, okay, all of that was BS, but everyone was scared at the time. Yes. And you can kind of see that in flesh eating mothers. People have sex with this one dude and start eating their kids. That's basically the movie. Yeah. Don't you hate it when you're just running in the woods and you realize that your arm's gone? I do. Like how I do. If I had a nickel, you know? But again, this is a horrible, horrible movie. It is. It is with bad. some. I mean, but when you have two actors sitting on a curb, one in a yellow hoodie, and she says the line, "My mom ate my little brother," and they break out laughing, mm -hmm. and just keep that shit in. Yeah, I appreciated that. And that stupid line of like, hey, we're going to have our mothers chewing our asses off. And it's like, ah, yeah, ah, you get it. But the uh, acting was horrible. Nobody was believable in the slightest. And they were all basically just really reprehensible people. The acting was so horrible that it felt to me like you know, like a like a Frankenstein seventy seven. You know, like 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 a Dracula seventy eight. Like yeah. this movie is Manos eighty eight. Yeah, that's what it felt like to me. That like this movie, it wouldn't surprise me if this movie was made because the fertilizer salesman was it had a bet going. Yeah. Yeah. It's it has such a low budget vibe that it felt like a modern day blood like an eighties version of Blood Feast. Well, Larry, looks like it's another long hard one. But money and, and time was put in on the effects. I mean, yep. I'm not saying the effects are great, but the that makeup was really interesting, and that jaw opening up. And the chain biting thing, yeah, were all yeah, really chain, pretty yeah. competent effects. Yeah, the film is so bad and so cheaply done that the poster that you have here next to us it says, uh, "Flesh eating mothers—they bit off more than they could chew." 
A good tagline would have also been flesh eating mothers. Wait, this isn't a trauma film? Yeah. That would have been a perfect. There was a trauma film. There was a trauma film that uh, Tom and I would watch all the time. And it was one of those films where it's just, it's not a film that Lloyd Kaufman made or that Lloyd Kaufman gave money to make. It's one of those films that someone made and it was really bad. So Lloyd Kaufman bought the rights and released it. Like it's Mother's called Day. Blades. Yeah. Blades. And it's about a, it's about a golf course where the, the, the lawnmower they use to clean the golf course starts killing golfers. Okay. Just running them over. And it's just dumb and stupid and low budget. But but so many trauma films, they try and be bad. This one tried to be good and they failed. So it was purchased by trauma. And I'm surprised that Flesh Eating Mothers is, doesn't have the name Lloyd Kaufman in it at all. Yeah. I'm surprised Dick Miller didn't show up. <laughs> I was expecting him to pop up. This seemed right up his alley at the time. I mean, for every Gremlins, there was like that one really B movie that he would appear in, you know? Yeah. Yeah. This screams second film at the drive-in. Yes. There's the double feature, there's the big one you pay attention to, and then there's the one where you can just make out and get high. This is the second film. Yes. Also featuring Flesh Eating Mother. I love the kid Billy who comes home in the beginning. He comes home and he's all, what's for dinner? And his mom has the sickness. But she's eating food like Mrs. Creosote in The Meaning of Life. Yeah. She's got spaghetti and pizza and mashed potatoes and she's just eating. Just, and then the husband shows up and shoots her as she's chew chewing Billy's severed leg. I will say this, though. I will say this. Unpopular opinion. This movie is cheaply made. It is badly done. The sound is way off. Everyone sounds like a 30-year-old New York City cab driver. Hey, Mom, I'm trying to study here. Bad script, bad acting. A lot of actors look like 80s porn stars. Really bad film. I still found it scarier than Skinamarink. Okay. Uh, if Skinamarink was made in Canada for $15,000 and its worldwide box office total was over $2 million. Yeah. It is so bad. We were going to do it next, but this movie was so bad that for our next film, I pick something that's supposed to be good. But... Pretty soon we're going to have to do Skin Marine because I want you to see this film. Okay. And I want to discuss it with you. Okay. It is. Ugh, okay. The You Should Drink that's More why, That's scene. why I have said several times we should do a movie. Yeah. Do it right the... in your house. Draft all your kids. Yep. But we can come up with something weird that we can set just in your house. I like those movies. I like those movies where you feel that you could make a movie comparable to this. I found a movie online that we're going to do eventually one of these uh, episodes, and it's called Attack of the Giant Blurry Thumb. Okay. And a couple made it during quarantine, and it's about a woman who is attacked by a giant blurry thumb, which is the thumb of the guy who's holding the camera. Okay. And it's like, you made a 72-minute long film with that premise. We got to make a film. Yeah. And sometimes I feel that way with some films, like Flesh Eating Mothers. Like, this is just a bunch of people who got together and they had a fun time, you know? I mean, the You Should Drink More Milk Sun scene was scarier than the entirety of the film Skin of Marine. Yeah. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? It's bad and forgotten. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So the milk kid, he's there, and his mom's like, drink milk, son. 
Yes. You should drink more milk, son. You should drink more milk. And he drinks the rest of the milk. So that he is more like up. veal. Which yeah. is what I yeah. what, which was I found, found kind of funny. Except I yeah. hated that kid. Yeah. So so then the mom stands up and takes a bite out of the kid's forehead. <coughs> and the kid's reaction <coughs> to his mom biting a chunk of his forehead off is what? Yeah. That's it. I'm running away for real this time, Mom. And then when he meets up with his uh, friends, the other uh, uh, 80s porn stars, yeah. he says, uh, oh, what happened to your forehead? Oh, my mom is on the rag. A and that was the part that I that I thought was the most realistic. Because you know how in the 80s, funny, all moms smoked and owned, owned uh, turquoise jewelry and Lee press-ons? And took bite out of their kids' heads every twenty-eight days. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was just a part of life. Yes, it was just a part of life. This movie screams USA up all night. Yes, it does. But Rhonda Shearer, not uh, Gilbert Godfrey. Yes, the the ditzy blonde one, Bunny. If you saw your mother eating someone and then slowly creeping over to you. Are you attacking your mother? Are you are you one of the freaking teens in this movie? Uh, I, I could quietly leave. You know, no, but the thing the thing that gets me is that the quick. teens are just like, I can't hit her. She's my mom. Sure, she ate my dad and ate my brother and ate my sister and ate my friend, but I can't hit my mom. Dude, my mom eats one finger. I am getting a blowtorch. I'm sorry. <laughs> my mom looks at me a little bit hungry. I'm getting out of bath. Yeah, I, I don't think I would do much whining about it. Yeah. I, uh, I feel like this is a good, bad movie. There, there's a line between a lot of, a lot of movies try to be a bad movie and they fail because they're trying to be bad then there are those films that try really hard to be good but they end up being bad we did that two summers ago battlefield earth perfect example yeah this movie is going to be great oh wait it's horrible then there are those films those rare films where it's like okay this movie's not going to be the best, but we're going to try our hardest, and we're going to have fun. And they had fun making this movie, and it looks fun, and it's cheap, and it's stupid. And, you know, you smoke a joint, watch Flesh Eating Mothers. It's fine. It's bad. But it's uh, yeah, bad I'm, enough. I'm, I'm sticking with my, it's horrible. Really horrible. But it's got bright spots. It does. It's got when that I yeah when that mom opened up her gaping maw like like um like uh, Garrett Morris in the stuff and yeah. her, her mouth opened like uh, killer clowns from outer space. That got me. I'm like, oh okay, very impressive. You yes, you all tried. You put some effort into this. Good for you. Everybody go see Flesh Eating Mothers. Out of all the 80s horror movies that are out here, this is one that I'm surprised that people don't know of that well. Yeah. Because Johnny Depp doesn't get sucked into a bed during it. Because Kevin Bacon isn't stabbed. Yes. Because Heather Langenkamp isn't in it. But this movie is fun. I, I, I had fun watching this horrible movie. Funny. What? <laughs> Next week, we were going to do another horrible movie, but I wanted to pick something that was a horror movie, but that's supposed to be good. And this is a movie that I've been wanting, I've been wanting to see every free day that I have. I have wanted to sit down and watch this movie, but I haven't been able to because it, I have five kids and I have a wife and it's been very difficult. But final, but I figured... One good way to make sure that I watch it is to do it for the podcast. So next episode, next week, it's not next week, it's two weeks from now. But next week, we will be watching Mia Goth, the new queen of horror from X and Pearl, two movies that came out in 2022 okay. that were freaking amazing. She stars in 2023's 
Infinity Pool. Okay. It's supposed to be good, but it might be bad. I don't know. It's a new horror film, and we're going to watch it. It's supposed to be crazy. And we are watching that next week. Uh, check the cough cough. It's okay, there. cool. That's what we're doing next week. But now that I'm looking back at this week, hey, um, Dick Miller, uh, Sean Penn, John Cleese, Roger Waters, Just Kidding Rowling, Knock at the Cabin, Ant-Man 3, The Dark World, uh, American Psycho, like they'll ever make a movie out of that. I got to say. Uh, and, and this episode proving along with the rest of the world, nobody really gives a shit about Julian Sands. Yes. Yes. I gotta say, uh, and some really great pickup lines, don't want to forget that. I gotta say, I think this has been a pretty good episode of the podcast. This has been a damn good episode. Okay. Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> because I was going to say that I felt I felt that way, but I feel like you're the one who gives kind of like the stamp of approval at the end of the podcast, and I don't want to step on any toes. <laughs> when I say that, I try and say that specifically like Daffy Duck from the first episode of the Looney Tunes show, which was a sadly canceled ahead of its time. Uh, but yes, I concur with your <laughs> assessment, good sir. So Daffy. until next week, Daffy. Yes. I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend May Lynn. And on behalf of Maxwell, Natasha, Mal, Eleanor, Maxwell, Amber, and everybody else, I just want to say thanks for listening. And we will see you next week, you godless heathens. And you do waffles and poopy tits. And you cocaine bear. Nice. And you cookie. And you cookie. Okay. Daphne Duck. Daphne Duck. Daphne Duck. Thanks. I'm never gonna uh never gonna outlive that. Do 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 do